In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Samyang 85mm f1.4 AF lens and 85mm is such a classic focal length for portraits, events and lifestyle. It forces you to shoot at proper working distances giving a more flattering look due to the compression and it also does a good job with background separation with moderate apertures. It melts the background with larger apertures. Oftentimes, the isolation effect of an 85mm lens can turn a distracting scene into a more intimate targeted scene that is all about the subjects in the frame. The Samyang 85mm f1.4 lens boasts a large aperture of f1.4 and while that's not the largest aperture ever, most people will consider it a pro level lens. f1.4 lenses in the E-mount system can cost two and a half times more which is in a different solar system and my inner Asian cheapness won't allow for it, so I'll do a more reasonable comparison a little later with a lens that's equivalent in price of 599 MSRP, the Sony 85mm f1.8 which is not particularly cheap either. If you enjoy gear videos and too embarrassed to admit it, be sure to subscribe to my channel and we can make poor life choices together. Let's talk about the design. Starting at the front of the lens, you'll find a generously sized round lens hood that fits securely in place. Inside is a standard 77mm filter thread and the lens has a maximum diameter of 88mm and a length of 10cm or just under 4 inches and a weight of 568 grams. The lens has a sleek black anodized finish with manual focus ring without switches and buttons and a couple of accent rings. It now has a improved build quality with weather sealing. The optics include 11 elements, 8 groups and 9 rounded aperture blades. The lens has a minimum focus distance of 90 centimeters or just under 3 feet. Next up is autofocus in good light. Autofocus is adequate and slightly slower than the Sony 85mm f1.8 and being an f1.4 lens, not bad at all. I think it's okay for a moderate action or action from afar, but for something that can get close up like sideline sports, it can struggle. Bruh, you've got like this much depth of field. This next test was performed on an A7 Mark III video autofocus where the subject is walking to the camera. The lens can lag while tracking and will eventually catch up and stay stuck on the subject. Moving on to the next test, an interview style test. Here's where the camera sits and here's where the subject sits. So I filmed myself for 5 minutes in this next test and I'll speed it up. Here I am waving to friends that I don't have. For the majority of the 5 minutes, this lens stays locked on fairly well. It ran into an issue where I crossed my legs in the video. Aside from that, I feel confident in this lens outside of purposely trying to trick the system. Low light focus tends to struggle more and this really depends on how low we're talking about. This entire room is lit by a phone facing a wall and providing ambient light. It's very dark and at this rate, the lens is at its limit. The lens sometimes loses focus as if my wife were speaking to it. <laughs> Aside from my unreasonable test, the lens focuses well and check out that full frame goodness, even at ISO 6400 on the older A7 III. As for the AF noise, in a quiet room, you can hear it. However, the only mic that would pick it up is the in-body mic any external mic would reject that small amount of noise. Next up is breathing. It's moderate to high. The amount is very noticeable and more noticeable the closer you get to the lens where it can be quite dramatic. Try to keep movement low for the best results. Pretend you work for the city. Up next, let's check out the sharpness. Here's a test chart compared to Sony. With center wide open, Sony is biting sharp. While Samyang has less sharpness, it is by no means soft. Moving to the mid frame, the Sony leads by a bit more and continues going towards the far corners. Moving on to f2, the Samyang improves a bit in the mid frame while the far corners stay relatively unchanged. At f2.8, there's more improvement in the mid frame, less in the far corners. At f4, the mid frame catches up as well as good improvement in the far corners. At f5.6, the lens is near max. However, you want to be at f8 to squeeze every last bit of sharpness as I do think that is where things are the finest on this lens. Real world use, I would say things look pretty sharp even if test charts show this lagging behind the Sony. This is wide open and there is a good amount of detail. At f2, things are a little clearer. The cars are a little crisper. At f2.8, the text on the signs have better contrast and resolution. At 
that for the progression of sharpness seems to mimic the test chart. And in practice, I would have no problem shooting landscapes at this aperture. Overall, the edges aren't as crisp as the center through the range of aperture. Sharpness is fair to good when shooting wide open at f1.4, more than usable, very good at f2, and outstanding at f2.8 or smaller, with little distortion to correct. Outside of test charts, the image quality is outstanding, Distortion is a mild pincushion, very low in my eyes, and easily corrected if not done automatically. Vignetting can be a bit heavy for some at f1.4 and mostly gone by f2.8 and f4. It can even add to a photo. Ever had a photo you really liked but the background was so distracting you couldn't enjoy it? It's hard to focus on an object in a picture when there's too much going on in the background. The bokeh effect is often used to create a dreamy feel in photos. It creates an artistic look that can catch the viewer's eye. So up next is bokeh. Up close, it's outstanding. You'd be hard pressed to find flaws. You get a totally dreamy look and if you're not into that sort of thing, you can simply stop down. The advantage of a large aperture prime is this option. Foreground is very good. Things turn to mush like a potato meeting a pressure cooker. At mid distances, background is great compared to the smaller f1.8 by Sony. The larger Samyang is less prone to outlining of spectacular highlights. It has some of its own, just less amount. Football bokeh exists and only noticeable when the background is not totally obliterated. Once again, Samyang handles better in this aspect compared to the Sony. The swirling effect, again, less pronounced, not as noticeable. Some people like this effect and I'm not judging. F1.4 compared to F1.8 has two thirds a stop more blurring ability and it can make a bigger difference at longer focal lengths like 85mm, especially when shooting at longer distances. Group shots, because why not? There's a 3D effect working with this distance, there's sufficient depth of field because you're so far away, and that creates a subsequent steep drop off in background blur. I think it looks great for this sort of thing and that's just my opinion. Next up is Chromatic Aberration and Loca. It goes away progressively and gone by f4. Chromatic Aberration is minimal at the center of the image field, but can be more present at the edges. In more challenging conditions such as bright pictures taken against a dark background, some fringing will be noticeable. As the subject matter changes, the level of personalization needed will change as well. This should be no problem for general subjects, but if CA is a concern, you should use your post-processing software accordingly. The longitudinal chromatic aberration, loca, boca CA, is moderate and you can see the greens and purples and gone progressively as you stop down to F4. Next up is flare and sunstars. Flare is completely harmless and easily manageable even in the most severe situations. The only side effect you may experience is some contrast drop, however you'll need to try your best to make that happen. Sun stars are another thing. Sun stars are minimal with this lens and it's my suspicion that it's due to the curved aperture blades. I would love if there was a more dramatic effect. Final thoughts, this lens is not a $700 lens, and it's also not an expensive $1100 lens. This is a much more budget friendly option at $600. This is a cost effective option and you can't go wrong with this lens, especially at this price. You'll get excellent image quality, little to no distortion, and an amazing bokeh effect. The depth of field is just as good as with more expensive lenses. The Samyang AF 85mm f1.4 FE is a fast and affordable traditional 85mm portrait lens for Sony full frame mirrorless cameras, offering users a viable alternative to the far more expensive 85mm f1.4 GM optic and similarly priced although much slower Sony FE 85mm f1.8 lens. Once again, build quality is quite good with the metal lens mount and housing, nice lens hood along with weather sealing, contributing to the luxurious feel. The relatively small size and weight is icing on the cake. Auto focusing was acceptable and the constant firmware updates approve upon this factor, giving you a lens that is future proof and constantly improving. The AF mechanism is relatively quiet, making it well suited for quiet venues or video use. The Samyang 85mm asking price is definitely competitive compared to its key competitors, especially when you consider that the Samyang's image quality isn't much lower than the Sony equivalent and sometimes even better. If you don't need the f1.4 maximum aperture or a smaller size, the Sony FE85 f1.8 is a strong contender. However, the bold aperture is kind of the point with this lens. How badly do you want that delicious bokeh and beautiful imagery? 
for many folks that don't need the tracking abilities and don't mind the reasonably larger size, this lens will give amazing and beautiful imagery for the right price. Thanks for watching. Please like, sub, share. See you in the next one.